Hello students, today I will be with you in uh, grade 12 physics lesson from Bar School. Uh, and I will be with you in this summer course. So for more information to get from us, I hope that you register with us with the summer course. Today we will talk about chapter two. We have chapter two in grade 12, rotational equilibrium and dynamics. Section two, we start with talk. But before we start talking about the talk, we need to recognize two different objects. We have objects called point mass and the other one extended object. To recognize between them, that depends on the way that the object is moving. Depends on the way that the object is moving. For example, for a point mass, how to recognize that? It's an object that exhibits translational motion only. So that is the key. That is the key. For every idea in physics, we have a key. We use that key to answer the question. In this case, is they are telling us it's translational motion only. So we need that. It's only one type of motion, only translational. What do we mean by that? For example, the object is changing position from a point to another point, changing position. But while it's doing that, changing the position, it's not rotating, it's not rolling. Like, for example, the movement of a car, the whole body of the car, from a point to a point, okay? Like, for example, a cat climbing a tree, something is dropped. In that case, it's only translational motion. Okay, so that's the key. So when we have been asked about, can you consider this object as a point mass or extended object? I will answer that by checking the type of the motion. That will tell me what type of uh, object I have. Okay, the extended object, an object except translational, and rotational, for me, this one will be considered the key, rotational motion, that is the key, rotational motion. So I will think about the object. Is it moving while it's moving? We have rotational motion. If we have rotational motion, that's it. It is extended object. So the key for the second type is rotational motion. By the way, it's important. It has to be more than one time in general exam for physics, okay, do not, cancel or do not skip any subject in physics. Everything is important. We have straight away this question in the section of you related to that idea. It says, in which of the following situations should the object or objects be treated as a point mass? So they're asking for classification. Is it a point mass? In which should be treated as an extended object? They're asking for that. Exactly, it has been in general exam, the same question. Okay, so maybe in the final exam, it will be like that. In which one of them, we have an extended object. Three of them will be point mass. One of them will be extended object to do that. Okay, we have A. Now, but they are classifying. We need to classify that. They're asking for classifying. So we will classify each depending on the type of the movement. A. A ball dropped from the roof of a house. When you are dropping something, okay, you can exhibit just by yourself. Try that. Can you see any rotation while it's moving down? No rotation. So it's only translational motion. So for this one, for A, straight away, I can answer that. It's a point mass. Point mass. How we figure out that? because it's moving only with transitional motion, no rotational motion. For B, a ball rolling. Now be careful about this key, rolling. When it's rolling to where the goal, don't you think while it's rolling, it's rotating? Okay, and we said when we have rotating, rotational motion, in that case, it is an extended object. So for B, extended. Extended object, okay. So dropped, rolling, C, a pinwheel in the wind. A pinwheel, like we have that, like this for the kids, they are playing with a pinwheel, this shape, kind of that, okay. In the wind, so of course it's spinning, 
a pinwheel in the wheel, it's spinning. That spinning, again, it's type of rotational motion. So again, what we have, we have extended object. Object, OK. Now with D, please be careful with this one. OK. Earth traveling around the sun. Because for the same object, which is Earth, we have both cases. How is that? For Earth traveling around the sun, OK, if it's around the sun, if it's around the sun. So let's think about it. We have the Earth, OK, and we have the sun. If they're asking us about the Earth around the sun, so they have isolated. It's isolation of the movements. Because as you know, that Earth, it's, it has two movements. It has two movements. It has the movement of the rotation around itself, which is give us day and night. And at the same time, while it's doing that movement, it has another movement, which is transitional around the sun. So be careful about that. If they're asking about Earth traveling around the sun, Earth traveling around the sun, so they're asking about the translational motion. So in that case, it will be point mass. It will be point mass. What about if I change this to Earth traveling around itself? Earth traveling around itself, in that case, be careful. It will not be point mass. It will be an extended object. Why? Because traveling around itself or rotating around itself, it means that we have rotational motion, so it will be an extended object. OK. Now, after we had an idea, we know how to distinguish between point mass and extended objects. Now we will start talking about torque. OK. For torque, which is the main subject for, for our chapter, Torque tau, the symbol is called tau, a quantity measures the ability of a force to rotate an object around some axis. Okay. So if you know, always I'm saying, if you know definition, you can write the formula. If you know formula, you can write definition. A quantity measures the ability of a force. So we have force to rotate an object. We have an object which may rotate around some axis. So we have a force applied to a on a distance, and as a result, we will get torque, which is the product of rotating the object. We start with that, with the equation of torque. OK. We said that we have an object which may rotate. Let's assume this is my object. OK. I have the axis of rotation axis of rotation, or maybe it's called pivot point, pivot point. So because for grade 12, you should be familiar with every expression. If it's axis of rotation or pivot point, same meaning. Now I have applied force applied on that object, OK? The applied force will cause that object to rotate. Applied force. I have applied force. OK, so for tau torque, it is F, the applied force. D, what we mean by D, this is important. D is the perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation or the pivot point to the force, this distance. OK, the distance, D. For D, always, let's check the definition, and we will explain that. We have the lever arm definition. Lever arm D, the perpendicular distance. Be careful about this. The perpendicular distance, OK? From the axis of rotation, from the axis of rotation, to a line drawn along the direction of the force. So. By the definition, we should know that if we have a question asking about the angle between the direction of the lever arm and the force, it's always 90 degree because that is in the definition. It's always 90. It's not changing the direction of the lever arm 
with the force is 90 degree perpendicular. OK. So sine theta, I will explain what we mean by that. Sine theta, because not every time the force applied on the object perpendicularly with the object, maybe the force is applied with some angle. It's not perpendicular. In that case, we need sine theta. For example, what about if I have another force, another force applied with angle, like this? In that case, again, we will get torques. But the torque is not equal in both cases. We have torques, one, two, but they are not equal because we have different angles of the applied force. So that is theta. Theta is the angle between the force and the distance and the lever arm. OK, so we will try to figure out the measuring unit, and we will talk about the cases of the angle. For the measuring unit, always in the exam, if you have a question, if you face a trouble with the measuring unit, it's very simple to figure out the units. Just write the formula, and you will figure out the unit by yourself. As we know, any force measured in newtons, distance is always meters, OK? So for sure, the measuring unit of tau will be newton meter. So we have the measuring unit of tau, torque, the measuring unit of the applied force, and the measuring unit of the distance in meter. Easy. Now let's think about cases of sine theta. Of sine theta, be careful regarding physics. In any formula, if you have sine, in any formula, if you have sine, in that case, it will be maximum. It will be maximum when the angle is 90 degree. It will be maximum when the angle is 90 degree. So tau is max. In which case, if theta equals 90 degree. Why? Because as we know, sine 90 degree equals 1. Sine 90 degree equals 1. OK. What about in other formulas that we have in grade 12, which contains cosine? In that case, if you have cosine in the formula, be careful. In that case, it will be maximum if the angle is 0, because cosine 0 is 1, like they are parallel. OK. The, let's focus on this point. So we have max when? If theta is 90, it's a good question for multiple choice. Like, for example, with which of the following angles between the force and the other arm, or be, be between the force and the distance from the axis of rotation, the torque produced is maximum? A, 0 degree. B, 30 degree. C, 45 degrees. D, 90 degree. Because they are asking for max, it should be 90 degree. OK. What about if they're asking about zero tau, zero torque? No torque will pre produce. Tau, torque, torque is zero. If theta equals zero degree or 108 degrees. OK, be careful about that. If we have theta 0 or 180, so sine 0 degree equals 0. Sine 180 degree also 0. That's why it turns to 0. What we mean by if theta is 0 or 180, in that case, we have the force is parallel. The applied force is parallel to the object. OK, we can demonstrate that easily. I have this object which has the ability to rotate about the axis. OK. If I'm applying the force perpendicular, I got max. With angle, not perpendicular with angle, I still got rotation. What about if I'm applying the force parallel? Look, parallel or opposite direction. If it's parallel, can you see it's parallel? OK. I'm pushing it inside. Can you see any rotation? No. In the opposite direction, theta equals 180. Again, no rotation. So from that, we can write an important note to remind ourselves. Any force 
passing through the pivot point will not produce any torque. Be careful about that. So it's again, multiple choice question in general exam. Which of the following forces will not produce any torque? Which one we pick? Which one we choose? The force passing through the axis of rotation or the force passing through the pivot point. Okay, now we have this question, which was a general exam question, and most of the students was wrong with that, with the answer. The question was was, okay, in which case, in which case we have the torque is half its maximum value. Maximum value. Okay. So now what about we have this question is asking about in which of with which of the following angles the tau, the torque will be have its maximum value. Okay. So let's make it like a question form. We have theta equals, okay. Uh, 90 degree, theta equals 45 degree, theta equals 30 degree, and theta equals 60 degree. And the question was like that. With which of the following angles, we will get half the maximum torque, half the maximum torque. And as I told you that most of the students thought about it like that. If 90 is max, so half the max means 45, which is a big mistake. Why? Because we are considering sine theta, not only the theta. In that case, you should think about which angle, which angle its sine is equal to half. Which angle half, which is 30. Sine 30 equals half. It will be half its maximum value. Okay, students, uh, inshallah, next lesson we will start the calculation about torques which is very easy you have only to multiply the force and the d the distance and we have positive and negative torques torques is a vector quantity we will talk about in details in next lesson inshallah thank you for your time thank you again mm -hmm.